Good morning, brethren. Get your King James Bible, the real Bible, and turn in your King James Bible to the book of Psalms, Psalm 57. I want to share with you a little something that um, the Lord kind of shared with me, and it was a blessing to me this morning. <laughs> so, uh, turn in your King James Bible to Psalm 57. Please follow me along in the King James Bible, the real Bible. Follow me along in the scriptures as we read, okay? Psalm 57. We're going to read this whole thing. merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. <clears throat> I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. Our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, is our cover, is our refuge, and he provides for us all that we need, not that we greed. We need to remember that, Christian. Verse 3, He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Shilah, God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. Look at that. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Swallow up. Everybody is so paranoid and afraid by the Jesuit propaganda and by the poison crown, of course. But it says here, he shall send from heaven. That doesn't mean that we as Christians won't go through sufferings today. I mean, you look at the history of the body of Christ, the true body of Christ. And look at the one who was used of Satan to greatly inflict that suffering upon us. Roman Catholicism and the Jesuits. But look at that. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. You know, brethren, today, in whatever capacity you are in, and all the brethren who uh, I prayed for this morning, <clears throat> may we be little vessels of mercy. <coughs> mercy comes from the Lord, yes. But let us be open unto being used of the Lord, that his mercy may shoe forth through us in dealing with so many people who are lost and paranoid. Hmm, literally, not paranoid. Paranoid is not a King James Bible word. Who are living in fear. <coughs> and look at this. Verse 4, my soul is among lions. Hello! <laughs> and I lie even among them that are set on fire. Even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. Oh boy! People who use manipulation tactics against you, gaslighting, manipulation tactic, fear, subversion, cut you down because you're not one because you trust on the Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Cut you down for not adhering to ridiculous things. 
that are contrary to the scripture. And I'm going to address that in a moment. But look at verse 5. Okay, look at the contrast. Okay, look at the contrast. My soul is among lions, wild beasts. I lie even among them that are set on fire. Fire could be used in a good way for warming and cooking, but it is also when left unattended, uh, when left unchecked, is very destructive. Even the sons of men whose teeth are spears, jabbing, arrows, pshaw, pshaw, little fiery darts of the devil, okay? And their tongue as a sharp sword. They counterfeit what God would say through his word with what the prince of the power of the air hath given them. Look at verse 5. Be thou exalted, O God. We have to remember who truly is in control, Christian. Satan has been allowed to do what he's doing. Okay, remember when Satan said to our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, in the temptation of the wilderness, that all this stuff has been given unto me, and to whomsoever I will, I give it. And if you bow down and worship me, all shall be thine. Just to paraphrase there, beg your pardon, okay? But, be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. They have prepared a net for my steps. My soul is bowed down. They have digged a pit before me into the mist whereof they are fallen themselves. Sila. You know, when the Jesuits released this uh, biological weapon, the poison crown on the world, um, number one, they do have the cure for this. Absolutely. I believe that 110%. But they are falling into their own pit themselves. These people are, um, and I talked about this with a brother last night. Um, these people, brethren, who are living in fear, who are bowing at the dictates of our American corrupted government, and in the government wherever you live, perhaps, probably. Um, and when you look in the biblical uh, context, these people are fools. And the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. But uh, we were talking, me and a beloved brother last night, um, I have on my channel a link for Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Uh, look up this word. These people are idiots. Idiots. Void of reason. Void of reason. And these people are ready to receive the mark of the beast. They're ready for the Antichrist. They have no reason. <clears throat> they are prepared. But look at verse 7 now. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. I will sing and give praise. Is your heart fixed? Huh? You say so. Are you examining yourself? Are you proving your own self? Are you searching the scriptures to make sure that your life, your testimony as you go outside the door, is in accordance with the book, the King James Bible, the real Bible? Oh, by the way, hello, hi, hi, I'm speaking to myself as well. Okay? Got to remember this. Verse 8, Awake up, my glory, the Lord Jesus Christ, our Father. Awake up, my glory. Awake, psaltery and harp. I myself will awake early. 
And I do. <laughs> I was up at 1.30 this morning. <laughs> I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. I will sing unto thee among the nations. Aha! Brethren, in whatever capacity that you are in today, don't take it upon yourself from your own flesh, but wait for the prompting of our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, the uh, Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit. Okay? Wait for the prompting of the Lord. Because if you do it, it's you. But if the Lord do it through you, see? Let us remember. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people. These people who are lost in fear, ready for the Antichrist. I will sing unto thee among the nations. For thy mercy is great unto the heavens. And thy truth unto the clouds. Thy mercy is great unto the heavens. Excuse me. And thy truth unto the clouds. And verse 11. Be thou exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be above all the earth. <clears throat> o give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. For his mercy endureth forever. I read this this morning and it was such a blessing and I shared it with my wife of course my wife Susan unfortunately does work and she works at a government facility even though she says it's not it is uh, where she works with uh, people who have mental disabilities and special needs and the poison crown is in that facility <clears throat> And I understand that, okay, in that capacity, they're wearing gloves, they got to wear the masks. Okay, whatever. Okay, whatever. In that capacity, the people that she works around, the, uh, the people, you know, that are there, <coughs> they, um, they have mental disabilities, a lot of them. And are disabled. And verse 10 For thy mercy is great unto the heavens, and thy truth unto the clouds. Okay. And my wife is there as a witness. As you are in whatever capacity you are called to be in today. Okay. But let us also, with this hanging in the in the air, go to Romans chapter eight. Romans chapter eight, verses thirty-five, on to verse thirty-nine. Romans chapter eight. Go there, of course. <coughs> Romans chapter eight, verses thirty-five, on to verse thirty-nine. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. The perspective we have to remember, brethren. We is the body of Christ. It's not, a, it's not always a happy-go-lucky flowers in the park and sugar-coated lo lollipops and blah, blah, blah. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Through him. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, 
nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Uh, verse 39 right there. When someone asks you or talks about the love of God, you know, go preach the love of God. The love of God is Christ and him crucified. Verse 39 again. Nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, brethren, um, I don't watch TV. We have one every once in a while. My wife and I will watch a so-called Christian movie, which really is disturbing. And my wife doesn't like to watch anything with me because um, I'll watch, we'll watch like a so-called Christian movie. And right away I get bothered and I'm like, that's not true. That That's not how it, what the Bible says. And, uh, and anyway, but I do have a radio. And I listen occasionally to the radio. You know what um, the radio stations here, at least in Illinois and in my nation, you know what they're not really telling you about the uh, poison crown? You know, the coronavirus, COVID-19. They're not talking about recovery rate. They're not talking about how people who have had the poison crown and have recovered. No, because they are centering in on subverting the, the world, the nations with fear. This morning, there are like how many more cases here in Illinois and how many more deaths and the homeless population is uh, infected with the Jesuit biological weapon, the poison crown. But they're not talking about recovery rate. They're not talking about those who have survived and those who will survive. They're not talking about that, no, because the whole object is to put people in fear. And also I learned today that here in my nation that the government is considering making it mandatory that if you go outside your door that you have to have one of these masks on. And as a, a dear brother from Australia has mentioned to me in his nation, apparently, um, that it is considered an act of terrorism if they do not comply with the mandates of the government for the safety of the populace. An act of terrorism. Think about this, Christian. And you, my countrymen. Think about it. The government is going to make it a mandatory thing that you put on a mask, wear gloves, they have put all these um, restrictions on you and are removing our freedoms daily for our safety. Psalm 57. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. Verse 4 in Psalm 57. My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men, whose teeth are spears and arrows, and their tongue a sharp sword. You know another thing about fire, the uh, negative, if you will, thing of fire, that it is very destructive, 
but it spreads quickly and rapidly, just like Jesuitical propaganda. And here in America, they are putting up spit guards by cash registers. You know, like uh, you go to a grocery store now and you go to the uh, checkout. The cashier is like here and they have a thing of plexiglass, spit guard. My wife is like, they're not spit guards. I was like, yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. And a brother said to me last night, it's like, well, that's what they put on the salad bars and restaurants. <laughs> it's so it's it's becoming ridiculous. As if it weren't already. And over this weekend, my employer, my the owner of the business himself <laughs> is coming by to hang spit guards where we work for our protection but also for them and the sad wicked wicked manipulative evil little manager over there is uh, also just falling into suit still looking to maintain her petty little kingdom and I'm very aware that he who is related to her may actually see this. I feel sorry for the both of you. You have chosen your own wickedness and your own stiff necked, uncircumcised in ear and heart ways. And unless you repent, you're going to get what's coming to you. It's going to reach the point Brethren, I work around people, yes, but I'm not afraid. <clears throat> I'm not afraid. They're not telling you about people who are recovering. And people who have, as they say, compromised immune systems, okay, okay. This is a real biological weapon that the Jesuits have created that can kill people, yes, but you can recover. And brethren, you know, before you go to Romans 13 about submitting to the government for our safety, no, 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 no. This is not for safety. It is for to bring in the Antichrist system, and very soon, you and I, save King James Bible-believing Christians, born again, we're going to be called up. Caught up, excuse me. And then without missing a beat, these people are going to go to the pharmacia, the pharmacies, the pharmaceutical companies, and get the vaccinations. And, uh, you know, if they come out with a vaccine, Christian, if, you know, if they finally release the vaccine, which they have, I'm sure they do, for this biological weapon, the poison crown, Christian, you really need to check yourself if you're even considering getting the vaccine when they let the people have it. And also before you, my brothers and sisters, and before God, I'm not afraid of the poison crown. And if it comes to the point where I am being told what I can and cannot do with my own body. Um, I'm going to say no. I can see at my work, they're going to put up spit guards and they're going to have us all wear masks. 
It's control. It's manipulation. It's subversion. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. I will refuse. I will refuse. Because my government has no right to tell me what I can do with the body that belongs to the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Now, yes, Paul is talking about fornication. Yes, 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 yes. But you have to remember the admonition. Okay? Uh, unbroken in Bible with pages that are sticking together. First Corinthians chapter 6 verses 19 on to verse 20. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? Which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, which are God's. Brethren, the time is rapidly approaching where, I mean, look at, you know, what Brother Justin um, uh, said to me. Sorry, from uh, Australia said, you know. And also, I remember Brother Christopher Lappin showing a video about how people are going crazy over there. Uh, Brother Ed Carson, uh, you know, and Brother Aaron Judge, you know, I'm sure it's, it's crazy all over. It's crazy all over. Be merciful unto me, O God, be merciful unto me. Oh, Psalm 57 uh, again. For my soul trusteth in thee, yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. I will cry unto God most high, unto God that performeth all things for me. He shall send from heaven and save me from the reproach of him that would swallow me up. Selah. God shall send forth his mercy and his truth. Is your heart fixed, brother, sister? Are you prepared to actually finally make that stand that so many of us have been warning you of and have been warned? Are you ready? Are you ready? Maybe today's the day that we'll hear our names called and we'll be caught up. Maybe. I hope so. Oh, I hope so. Now, I know many of you are, and many of you do. But then again, I know a lot of you are, have your eyes set on things that maybe we shouldn't. Hi! Are you ready to stand for this? Are you ready to stand upon this? Are you ready to stand no matter what it will cost you? Hi. Prepare yourself, brother, sister. Are you prepared? Are you prepared? <laughs> Proverbs. I took my glasses off. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 3. Ooh. Of course, it is the third that I've uh, recorded this, or I'm recording this. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 3, and an unbroken in Bible, which pages are sticking together. <laughs> Beg your pardon, brethren.
Proverbs chapter 3. Verses 5 under verse 7. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. <laughs> it shall be health to thy navel, verse 8, and morrow to thy bones, verse 9. Honor the Lord with thy substance. That's, you know, remember when this is written, this is King Solomon, okay? But our substance, your time, do you give time to the Lord? Do you honor the Lord with your precious time that he gives you when he affords you the mercy and grace to wake up? Oh, but you're too busy, huh? Yeah. Honor the Lord with thy substance and with the first fruits of all thine increase. So shall thy barns be filled with plenty. And thy presses shall burst out with new wine. Before you, my brothers and sisters, and before our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, when these freedoms are being taken away, when these dictates are are being dictated to us that are totally contrary to the freedoms given to us by the Lord Jesus Christ our Father that are explained and expounded and given to us by his preserved, given by inspiration, perfect word, the King James Bible. Where do we stand? As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. 5.30. I gotta go. Gotta go. Gotta go to work. I love you, brothers and sisters. And for those of you who I, I am aware of, uh, I have prayed for you. Be bold and take courage. Stand, brethren. Stand. I love you.